and welcome to you all. This is the uh, last talk of the first series that we have from Aisha Pune. And uh, as you know very well, the <clears throat> whole purpose of this lecture series is to bring the latest uh, cutting edge science uh, to the attention of the uh, uh, audience, to the attention of the industries, and trying to see how industry and science could collaborate such that uh, they could become the you know, come out with some innovative uh, processes and products that could help Indian industry uh, move ahead. Now the, you know, traditionally the collaboration between industry and science has been pretty minimal in, in the country. If I compare it with uh, countries like US and China, there is a lot more, I mean, with the aid of the government, of course, a lot been happening and uh, over the many years, many of their discoveries, many of the product developments uh, happened with hand-holding of the industry and science, working together, and even registering uh, you know, patents jointly. Now, shocking thing, like last lecture, we had Dr. Ogle talked about the, you know, the new industry of electric vehicles and lithium batteries. You know, the automotive industry is so big in the country, still we have the way forward, the way we are going ahead for the next few years on electric vehicles as well as on lithium batteries is going to be imports. Whether we import the electric vehicles or we import the components for assembly of electric vehicles. And of course, we are going to import the lithium battery also and just assemble the so-called you know, battery management system. So this, I think, this goes on, you know. So the industry looks for technologies developed overseas and try to see whom to get tied up with and bring it over. So if you want to break this and then you want to be more competitive, there has to be a process by which industry and science are able to collaborate and work together. And the, you know, this lecture series is an attempt, a first nascent, very early attempt in uh, sensitizing the industry to the, uh, you know, availability of, uh, excellent resources, like institution like ISA, for example, excellent uh, uh, resources as well as um, very qualified research faculty. So you all have that next door. And why seek, you know, technology and things like that from overseas? That's the whole purpose. Now in, uh, you know, uh, we come to the today's talk, is again something, an exciting uh, field. I was uh, telling my friends here, you know, that uh, generally we always thought, you know, genes are you're born with and nothing much that we can do. And much of the uh, things like, you know, talk about the major threat now, like cancer, for example, one always had feeling that it's, uh, it's mainly genetic, but uh, not so as Professor Galande will explain. A lot is really your environment and lifestyle. So this specific talk today, I'll read the synopsis of the talk and then I'll talk, I'll give introduction to Dr. Galande. The Human Genome Project was a 13-year international scientific research project aimed at decoding the blueprint of life. The circulating task was completed in 2003. However, map mapping and sequencing of genomes from large number of evolutionary diverse species in the past decade uh, revealed that sequencing per se is not sufficient to understand genome function. Past decade has witnessed the explosion of information on biomedical sciences due to the availability of genome sequences and the development of high throughput techniques that assay epigenetic modifications. These modifications underscore how the dynamic changes in environment ultimately affect the expression of genes on a day-to-day -day basis and over the course of lifetime. As a result, we might pass on much more information than that encoded by our genes to the next generation. You see, Dr. Galante will illustrate the technological breakthroughs and also discuss how they have enabled us to study disease susceptibility, especially focusing on the so-called lifestyle disorders and presumably, presumably take us towards personalized medicine. Now, a brief on the professor. Dr. Galante obtained his PhD in biochemistry from Institute of Science, 1996. 
postdoc fellow at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory USA from 96 to 2001. He studied cancer biology. Doctor joined the National Center for Cell Science in Pune, India in 2001 as a senior scientist. 2010, Dr. Galante joined professor as, I mean, as an ISA professor. Research in uh, Galante laboratory is focused on studying how the dynamic changes in higher order chromatin assembly govern gene expression in a spatial and temporal manner. At ISA, he leads the center of excellence in epigenetics and has assembled a team of scientists to study the evolution of epigenetic mechanism using multiple model systems. The center of excellence in epigenetics focuses on epigenetic modifications, underlying variety of biological important phenomena and their role in gene expression, regeneration, cancer, behavior, aging, and evolution. To fulfill these goals, Dr. Galanti has established a multidisciplinary program engaged in the interface of biochemistry, molecular biology, bioinformatics, cell biology, proteomics, and genomics. Currently, he's serving as the head of biology department and dean R&D at ISA. Dr. Galante has won several awards. I'll read out a few. Was a recipient of the International Scientific Senior Research Fellowship from the Wellcome Trust UK from 2005 to 10. National Bioscience Award in 2006. The Swarna Jayanti Fellowship in 2007. The Shwanti Sarub Bhatnagar Award, the very well-known, uh, very acclaimed award in 2010. And the G.D. Birla Award for Scientific Excellence in 2015. He is also elected fellow of the National Indian Academy of Science, Indian National Science Academy, and the National Academy of Sciences. Dr. Galante.